My name is Rithma Pandey and I'm a 13 years old global climate activist from Uttarakhand, India. So it's like, according to me, there is such a terrible moment uh, in the life of a person or a scary thing which makes, uh, which they see and which makes them feel to act on that. And I also had that terrible moment or that scary moment in my life. Um, so in 2013, a very devastating flash flood occurred in at Kedanath and hit many people, animals, and children's life. The flood was like very destructive, and uh, the that like the flood there was a huge destruction of houses and of agricultural land. Uh, the flood terrified and it impacted many kids, including me. It made me think of the reason behind it, and that was the time when I came to know about climate change and global warming. Being a kid exposed towards nature and wildlife conservation, I always had a very strong perspective towards uh, the protection of biodiversity, uh, which led to the curiosity into me to learn more about climate change and global warming. And as I learned about uh, child rights and the destruction of the biodiversity that was happening and how it was going to destroy our future, the future of uh, this generation, our children's future. I started realizing that this, uh, like, this is a really, really big problem and action has to be taken right now. Um, so uh, I started researching about the actions taken by government and by the organizations, basically by everyone to their levels. and. Uh, the first thing that I saw and uh, like the first feeling that I had was that I was shocked uh, because when I saw the difference between the documents available and uh, uh, like on the internet and the work done on ground, that was totally different. And that was the time which made me realize that all of them are interested in their own profits, luxuries and comforts. And for that, they are destroying our future. It's like, the destruction uh, that they're doing right now is going to have a very bad impact on all of us. And the decisions that they are taking today are taken at the cost of our future. And that was the time when I thought that enough was enough and uh, it is really important for me to do something. And I wanted to take an action on my own. So uh, like in, tw uh, in 2017, I took my very first action by filing the petition at National Green Tribunal against the government of India when I was nine, uh, asserting that the Indian government has failed to do their duty well and to mitigate climate change. And uh, that was the time after that, uh, like when my activism got started. So like after that in uh, 2019, I along with 15 other child petitioners, including Greta Thunberg, we all filed a complaint at United Nations and the Child Rights Committee to protect the child rights. And uh, it's like right now I have been working uh, on air pollution and cleanness of Ganga and most probably like my most focused and uh, uh, like the work in which I'm like more interested and in, which I found really fun is empowering school, college and institute students because that's when I meet children of my age, those who are really interested, because it's like I do found most of them really working really hard and most of them who are really interested in it. So I do really found like going to schools and meeting kids and empowering them, making them aware and basically making them feel that, yes, it is important for them to fight for their rights and for their future. And it's really important for them to raise their voices. Um, so it's like today I'll be talking a little bit uh, about energy sector of India and how it is impacting us. So I wouldn't go into like much more longer details, but I would just share with you all like what I basically feel. So it's like power act as a, like crucial component for the economical growth, development and welfare of the nation. And the demand of electricity in our country has increased rapidly. From April 2018 to January 2019, a total of electricity uh, that was used was over 1 trillion kilowatts hours of electricity. Um, it was used across the nation and the major portion of uh, this electricity generation came from thermal energy. 
So what I know is that thermal energy includes burning of wood, oil, coal, and other fossil fuels, which contributes to CO2 emissions. Um, I what I have found is from like what I have found from the EPA's report is that uh, 523 million tons of CO2 emission happens from all the thermal power plants in India. And this is just the report. We really don't know the ground reality. Um, so, but considering considering this report, it's a like huge amount of CO2 that's been released. And at the same time, we all know that CO2 emissions are contributing to cl uh, global warming and climate change. And over three quarters of global warming is happening due to CO2 emissions only. So this is like CO2 is one of the major contributor towards which is digging a hole into my future and which is going to destroy it. And we are the one who are responsible for all this. So it is also like the CO2 emission is also leading to ocean acidification, coral bleach, uh, and it is causing a lot many respiratory diseases from smoke and from air pollution, which many people in Delhi are facing right now. And this is a problem which happens every year. But till now, what I have seen, because I have been working and campaigning on uh, like on air pollution since last year and I uh, like in first I had my online petition going on and I uh, like many times I uh, like uh, uh, mo like kind of like made videos uh, like requesting our prime minister to do something on that but I was not really able to find any kind of like any sort of response from him or any sort of action and what I have seen is like every year when like from the October when stubble burning gets started and when the air pollution, the quality of air gets uh, like gets getting worse and worse. What really happens is like uh, there's many debates organized in TV shows and there are many meetings that's been happening. But what really happens is like in debates, what I see is like blame game has been happening uh, like all around. Everyone is just blaming that this is not our fault. This is this government's fault. This is this government's fault. Or this is farmer's fault. Or this is someone else's fault. But no one is really seeing that this is impacting a lot many people out there. This is impacting like the children like me or smaller than me living in Delhi and the nearby cities. This is impacting the older people and especially the poor people living out there. Because still, we being common people, we can still buy uh, like things necessary for us or necessary for our health. Like um, maybe uh, we say if the air quality gets very, 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 very bad that we are not really able to like breathe, then uh, we would uh, buy air purifiers for us, no matter what it costs, because it is essential for us and we are buying masks. But most of the poor people doesn't really have masks like money to buy proper or like good quality masks so this is what's been happening and in future if things would go worse and worse they would be the one who would be uh, who are going to be on the front line and those they are the one who are going to be uh, like all the consequences more than us and there's also situations like extreme weathers uh, like uh, like extreme floods are happening, droughts, cyclones that have been happening, hitting all of us. But still, it's like the action taken from our side and from the government side doesn't make me satisfied that, yes, we are trying our best. Um, like the food supply is getting disturbed. Wildfires are getting increased a lot. And there is increase in sea levels, of course, when ice caps are getting melted, the, the whole melted water is gonna come to sea levels and it's gonna rise them up and up and soon like uh, the cities or places near seas or oceans are gonna get merged into it um so all this is impacting all of us uh, like us co being common people but what we see is like uh, who is causing us to be honest if i say that uh, because it's like i'm going to be the one who is going to get impacted because of it a lot and uh, children of my generation are going to get impacted because of it a lot but we are not the ones who are like making uh, um who are making laws we are not the one who are driving cars and who are not like maintaining our cars we are not the one who are owning the factories which is cause which are causing a lot of pollution which 
which are not really following the norms properly we are not the government we are not the person running the government or running uh, the whole kind of like system which is creating this mess because of that people not, not are not really understanding the importance of uh, like taking action and not creating pollution and all this so if we are not the one who are doing this why we have to be the one facing this um we don't even have like little resources with us uh, and this is what's been happening and there is none like none of the technology right now can like assure me or can assure any one of you that if this destruction would continue then we can still survive if nothing would be done we can still survive and we can still live happily like this so if no one can really assure me this then it is really important for us to take action and our decisions taken today will decide our future so all we all have to think wisely and we all have to make decisions not only considering short term uh, profits in our uh, luxury and money but considering the long term effect of it on all of us not only on like uh, that it's about not it's not not just only about government it's not just only about your country it's not just only about your kids but it's it's about each and every person or each and every single citizen living in the world because it's not only going to affect me or it's not only going to affect india it's going to affect each and every one of us so i uh, as being a kid i'm scared about my future because the actions taken today doesn't make me satisfied and i to be honest there are not really enough actions taken today and uh, seeing all these things really make me worried because it's like if we see the increasing pollution level the increasing uh, polluted water level and water scarcity all over and the increasing temperature and all of these things these things somewhere make me worry that how things are going to be in that future because air pollution is getting worse and worse each and every year what the scarcity is getting increased in different parts of india and over the world each and every year so what would happen in coming decades what would happen after some years even so it really makes me feel re- like really scared that what i'm going to do in my future so i being a kid i'm really scared about my future and there are many kids out there like outside those who doesn't re- even know that how climate change is going to, going to affect them and those who know are really scared about it and are really depressed about it and i really want to live in a world where i can breathe feel freely without carrying an oxygen cylinder on my back because the conditions right now we all can see that it is getting worse and worse and as i have been working on air pollution and recently i also wrote the open letter to our prime minister in that i also mentioned that if nothing would be done then soon a day would come then we all have to carry oxygen cylinders on our back going to our offices me going to my school and like small kids living into their homes only so i really want to live in a world where i can breathe freely and where environment is healthy for us and uh, for other species as well because we human have created this ide- ideology that we are the superior but we are not the one who are superior each and every uh, species out there and each and every life out there is important it's not just about us only human because uh, we can't really survive without without uh, environment without trees or we can't really survive without animals it's like a ecological balance which has been made and we really have to respect that and we really have to respect for the nature and for that we have to take this thing out of our mind that we are the one who are the superior and this is the thing which is i can say is really difficult but uh, it ha- it is a fact and we really have to think about it wisely and uh, i want to live in a world where biodiversity it has equal importance uh, as compared to development i want to live in a world where i can see that environment is also getting equal importance as to development because right now everyone is just focused on development and how they can gain more and more profit and that's what all uh, like that is what uh, like is all about uh, them and i don't really personally feel that uh, this is what is going to like solve the problem so it is really important for all of us to understand that action 
has to be taken from ourselves only so it is really important for all of us to start taking actions right now and from our levels because it's like until and unless we try our best we can't really uh be like okay so we have we haven't done this but you should do this we can't recommend anyone else so i tried my best i try to live a sustainable life i try to reduce my carbon footprints as much as i can i and i would uh, like suggest all, you all that this is like our life and think about the coming generation and about the children as well don't be like selfish one uh think wisely and think about everyone and it is really important for all of us to take action uh rather than ourselves if we are not taking action correctly and on the government as well if they are not doing well so this is a thing which government can't do uh, can't change the thing alone we can't change the thing alone so it has to be a bit which in which we all have to contribute so let's be brave and let's start taking actions from right now and i would close here and hope that like i'm really excited to listen everyone out here in the panel and thanks for hearing me